So what I want to look at in this video is some basic application control that can be done via a policy in Intune. So I've got a virtual machine here running Windows 11 that is connected to Azure AD environment. So if I, for example, go in here and run PuTTY, that works fine. And again, if I run something like Brave, that also uh, will run fine. So I've got no application control on uh, this machine. What I want to do is I want to go into Intune and I want to create uh, a policy there that will allow me to control uh, these third party apps. All right. So again, we can see here Brave uh, works quite happily. And if I go into the standard Microsoft browser being Edge, you'll see that that also uh, works uh, quite well here. So let's just go in and click on a website here. All right. So you see that works uh, basically uh, as expected. Now to set the policy, what I need to do here is I need to basically go in and go to Intune. So I need to swap over to uh, intune.microsoft.com. And what I need to do is you'll firstly see that in here, I have a list of my devices. So in this case, the device I'm looking at is WM02, and you'll see that it is basically uh, compliant. Now, if I have a look at the configuration profiles in here, you'll see that there are currently no configuration profiles being applied to that machine. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and create a new uh, profile here. Let's go in and make it Windows 10. Now you'll need to select from the templates here. So let's go in and select the option for endpoint protection template. Go in and create that. So let's give that uh, a name just to identify it. And what we're going to do here is go in and have a look at the individual settings. Now you'll see in here that we have Defender Application Guard and by default out of the box it is not configured. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select to enforce this and when I do that you'll see that when I select that option, I'm going to enforce only Windows components and Microsoft Store apps that will be allowed to run. So let's start with that. And I'm going to add all devices just to make it easy. Go into next, go into next, and we will go in and create that uh, policy. So you'll see that that has been created. That will start rolling out to uh, my devices here and remember, Basically what I've done is just set the application control to enforce the application code integrity policy uh, and that's going to effectively restrict the running of applications on those endpoints to being uh, nothing but purely uh, Microsoft or well-known apps. So that has to apply to our device here. So what I can uh, go in here and do is try and speed that process up. So let's go into settings go into the accounts, go into the access work and school, and let's go in to the Azure AD join option here, as you can see, go into info, and you'll see that there's a sync button here. So I'm going to go in and try and force that policy uh, to take effect as quickly as possible. Now, even that may not um, you know, enforce the policy to run immediately. So what I'll do is I'll just pause the video until we see that policy actually applied uh, to that device. I'll come back and we'll walk through it from there. So after waiting a little while for the sync to happen, you'll see now that we get a message about being signed out. Now this is an indication that the application control policy we've just created has been successfully applied to the machine because application control here is going to use Defend Application Control, Windows Defend Application Control, WDAC, that's going to install at boot. So we do need to go in and boot the machine. So now that we've done that, let's uh, close off our sync window here and let's go in and reboot the uh, workstation so that those changes uh, can go in and take effect. Let's go in here and select restart. So our expectation is that once the reboot has successfully completed, the policy will be fully applied. This is going to restrict applications effectively to only the standard Microsoft uh, ones plus any that have come from the store. So we're expecting that our Brave and our Putty there won't run uh, because of that. So let me just pause the video and log in. Okay, so I'm back here on the desktop of my virtual machine and let's go in and try and run PuTTY. 
Now you'll see here that immediately we know the policy for application control is currently active because we have this warning when we uh, select a you know a non-standard or non-Microsoft app here. So we get this warning that Defender Application Control is blocking this app. All right, so let's close that. Let's see what happens over here when we try and run Brave. So again, same sort of thing here. Now, if we go in and try and run Edge or if we ran any other uh, standard Microsoft uh, style program. So let's go in here and go back to our eBay like we did before. So you see that actually works. So the idea here is what we've done is we've used uh, basically Windows Defender application control to control the applications on our Windows 11 device. Now that has come thanks to uh, the policy that we configured here in Intune. So let's go back into this policy here. All right, and remember that what we did is we went into the settings here and selected the option in application control to enforce code integrity policies. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this again because there is a less aggressive option that is available to you. Now this option down the bottom here, I can also enable the option to trust apps with a good reputation. Now that good reputation comes from something called the Intelligence Security Graph. Now this is a Microsoft database of known good apps. Now the downside to this or the challenge with this is that Microsoft doesn't reveal what applications are in that database. So it can be a bit hard to determine what actually uh, is included and not included. But what we're gonna do is we're going to update this policy, apply that once again. All right, so that has now been saved. What we'll do is to try and force this again, let's go into our Windows devices and find our VMO2. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna force a sync uh, from the cloud down. So let's go in and force that or as best we can. All right, so that's been initiated. So let's go back into our policy here uh, and have a look at it again, make sure that it is set up correctly, verify that is all good. Right, so there is our policy there. Scroll down the bottom here and have a look under Defender Application Control. And you'll see that we've not only got the code integrity enforced, we've also got the trust apps with good reputation is now enabled. So what we can do is go back to our workstation here. And again, what we'll try and do is we'll try and hurry this all along and do a uh, forced sync. And then we'll just have to wait for that policy to once again go in and be applied to the workstation. Then we can go in and have a look at what changes um, that that policy, uh, what the impact is on our workstation here. So let's go into the school access account. Let's go in here and sync this once again. And again, I'll just pause this video and wait for that synchronization of the policy from Intune, the changes that we've made to come down to the device. Uh, and then we can reboot and go through this and just see what the differences are by selecting that different option in there. Okay, so the sync didn't take quite as long this time. So let's go in here. You'll see here that uh, once again, because we are making a change to application control that uh, requires a reboot. So be aware of that. So let's go in here and close that. And once again, go in and complete a reboot. And then let's go in and uh, see what the differences are once we've gone in and uh, done a reboot. So what I'll do is I'll pause that while the system reboots and I'll come back when we're at our desktop. Okay, so we're back on our desktop here. So let us try and run PuTTY. So PuTTY you see now actually executes. Uh, obviously it is in the Microsoft database there as a known good app. Let's go in and uh, run Brave, see how that fares. And you'll see in this case that Brave is uh, considered to uh, not be a trusted app inside that Microsoft database. So again, this makes it a little hard to determine exactly you know, which application is and isn't included. Uh, and that can make this version of applicant control uh, a little bit challenging here. So once again, uh, PuTTY works fine, but then if I go in and run, try and run Brave, which you would expect generally to be in there, um, you can see that for whatever reason, Microsoft considers that to not have a, a good reputation.
So now that we've got application control on, probably a question is what happens if I want to uh, remove that and go back to you know the way things were now? My experience is that you shouldn't just delete the policy because that generally tends to leave those application control settings in place on the device. The best way to do it is to remove it using uh, the policy. So what I would suggest you do, the quickest way to do this I have found is to go back in application control and change this option here from enforce to audit only. Uh, that will leave the bottom one there to also be not configured. So change it from enforce to audit mode. Uh, and that will remove the policy, allow you to get to all your applications, run them, and then once that is working, then think about deleting the policy. So again, if you want to remove the policy after it has been in place and active, my advice to you is put into audit mode first, then make sure the applications work, then think about uh, deleting uh, the policy there. All right, so once again, we're gonna to have to wait for that to go in and synchronize so that we can pick up any changes. So let's go back into settings here and see if we can once again force that to happen quickly. And we might have to once again wait a little while for that policy to be enforced. Now remember that when that policy has been changed, it's going to once again require yet another reboot. So anytime we touch anything in application control here, we're going to have to go through that reboot process. So once again, I'm going to pause the video, let that come back with its settings, and we can go from there. Okay, so our sync there didn't take too long, so I'm going to again uh, close that. You'll see that it wants to reboot the workstation. So again, I'll go through and I'll reboot the workstation. And once that reboot has complete, we'll come back to the desktop and again, see what the impact is of setting that policy to our audit. Okay, so back on our desktop here, let us go in and try and run Brave. Now we've changed that policy to be audit rather than enforce. And as expected, you'll see that uh, Brave uh, runs fine there. Let's go in and double check on our putty, make sure that also works. All right, so that does work fine there. And again, let's just check that Internet Explorer works uh, as expected. So the reality here is, is that you can use uh, application control. You can use that via uh, an Intune policy. The way that you do that uh, in Intune would be to basically create a new policy, use the templates and select um, the you know uh, endpoint protection profile or template there go through that and find the defender application control settings there now remember that when you do make those settings that firstly the options are if you want to be the most aggressive you would uh, basically set this option here to enforce now when you do that you'll see that it will only allow windows components and microsoft store apps so if you have any third-party apps typically they are not going to run at all it's going to lock the workstation down to just the windows components and anything from the store now if you want to be less aggressive you can select the option here to enable uh, trusted apps with a good reputation and you'll see here, we use something from Microsoft called the Intelligent Security Graph to achieve that. Now, the challenge with the Intelligent Security Graph is going to be that it really doesn't give you any idea of what's trusted and not trusted according to Microsoft as a database. Microsoft manages and controls, and to my knowledge, is not made public. So it's a bit of a hit and miss uh, when you select that option. But that is a less aggressive option if you want to achieve that. But as you saw in our case here, Putty worked fine all the way through, but you know, Brave was not considered a trusted uh, application by uh, Microsoft there. Now, anytime you make a change to a policy with application control here, it effectively is using uh, WDAC or Defender Application Control, and that's gonna require a reboot. So anytime you change the policy, you're gonna to have to reboot the workstations or they're gonna be forced to uh, reboot when the policy is applied to the device. Now, my advice would be is if you enable this and get it all working and decide you don't want it, make sure that you don't just delete the policy because that will leave this Defender Application Control configuration in place on the workstations. My advice to you is to go and set it into audit mode first, save that, 
make sure that's applied to your workstations as we did so that the devices are operating normal with all the applications. Once you've got it working in audit only mode, then I would think about going in and deleting the policy after that. So again, a little tip from me is don't go in and del just delete the policy after you've got this all configured, set up and running uh, because tends to leave that uh, application control in place, which can be problematic if you're just looking to uh, get rid of that. Now, remember that this will be applicable to Windows 10 uh, professional enterprise as well as Windows 11. So what I've showed you here will work with basically anything from Windows 10 and above. It is a simple, easy way to apply application control if you need to do it. And my best practice recommendation would be is if you do want to apply it, uh, set the first option here to enforce and the second option here under trusted apps with good reputation to enabled, but be prepared for the fact that some applications uh, may not operate or may not be considered trusted by Microsoft and unfortunately there's no real easy way to troubleshoot or change that. So hopefully that has given you some idea of how you can apply basic application control quickly and easily using a policy in Intune and you know also the process that's involved and also some troubleshooting uh, tips for you there. So again thank you very much for watching this video.